Hi, welcome back to Progress, Not Perfection. I've got a, a little different shape canvas up here today. I picked some of these up. Uh, they're 12 by 24s from uh, a great sale that Hobby Lobby was having. I do like these Masters Touch um, canvases. They are a very bright, stark white when you start. And so it can be a little challenging to get liquid white on there if you're going liquid white first, but just, just try that a few times and uh, you'll get an even coat on there. What I've done to this canvas already today, I painted it with uh, black gesso and let that dry completely. And then once it was dry, I got it mounted on the easel and put a coat of liquid clear and then a thin coat of Prussian blue over uh, most of the area. My thought today is I'm just going to kind of play with a uh, Northern Lights kind of scene. Um, it's a little different dimensions on canvas. I'm, I'm not nearly such a wide rectangle kind of person, but I've really enjoyed a couple of these 12 by 24s uh, that I've done. I think I've done two, three of these different, different scenes. But I'm not going to so much uh, worry about teaching in this video today. I just want to share the, the joy I have of painting. I'll probably uh, share with you some more details of my own personal story, how painting came to be, and just kind of the the road I've walked because, man, it is such a privilege to get to share this type of painting with people. And I do love to teach classes. And um, I just couldn't imagine what the last three, just over three years now would have been if I hadn't discovered uh, a love for this kind of painting. I uh, was pretty good in the sales business, um, was in financial services for a long time. The last 12 years of that was doing residential lending, worked with some terrific people, but man, through, through all the ups and downs of that type of business, man, I, 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 I was in terrible shape. I drank way too much. I was really pretty well a, a, a jerk to everybody in my family. Um, and uh, any anyway, rate, I'll tell you some of that story as we go. Let's dive in and uh, just see where we go today. So like I said, I've got Prussian blue, a thin coat after putting on some liquid clear. These colors will really just pop as we go. And uh, blue is my favorite color, so I'm easy money on blue. So I'm just going to take a fan brush and pick up a little bit of titanium white and just kind of start up here in the sky and put in a few of what I think the Northern Lights looks like. I'll probably put in a few curtains. Um, I've never actually seen the Northern Lights in person yet, but... Um, I love doing this painting. It's been a while since I've done one like this, so let's just kind of see what we're getting. It doesn't take much white, and we can just sort of scrub in. We'll kind of make these look like a little bit of clouds, and then we'll just sort of soften them a little bit. Just put them way off in the distance. And then, like I said, we'll put some, some of those kind of curtainy northern lights on here. I think I might have two... Maybe it'll feel like a valley today. Maybe we'll put the distant mountains in there and have the... The, the larger ones coming up towards us. I don't know. We'll just kind of see what happens, which is, that's the great thing about this style of painting. You don't have to just make all those tough choices up front. Just kind of go. And I do think it is valuable to share our life experiences and stories with each other because, uh, man, nobody's got the, the, all the answers nailed. That's for sure. Some are, are certainly doing better than others. So, Find folks that can give you good counsel, folks who are, if you want to see what the future looks like, find folks that are 5, 10, 15, 20 years further down the same path that you have yourself on, and you keep doing what they did, you should expect to get what they got. So, that happened in my life as far as seeing where alcohol was such a problem for me, and I kind of had the advantage of... Uh, Spending eight days in the hospital almost five years ago. I uh, had a terrible pain in my gut and finally went to the doctor two days after that pain started and had two perforations in my esophagus, a big blood clot near my liver, a massively enlarged spleen, and what it looked like on x ray to be the beginnings of cirrhosis of the liver. So at uh, 43 years old, that will get your undivided attention, you would think. Um, thankfully, through that experience, 
there was absolutely some divine intervention, and whether you choose to believe that or not, that's, that's totally up to you. I'm not trying to convince you of a thing. I'm trying to share with you a little bit of a story that happened to me. I was laying in that hospital room in the middle of one night, and absolutely by myself, I was absolutely coherent and sober and lucid as at any time in the midday. And without a doubt, I felt this press on my shoulder and heard, Dan, this is the last time I'm asking. And again, I'm a pretty stubborn mule. And so <laughs> it only took me two really nasty drunks after getting out of the hospital between then and a little later that year. And thankfully on December 18th, uh, 2018, I actually consumed my last alcoholic beverage and have not had another one since. So that's that's kind of how my story unfolded, and there are more details and, and personal bits of that that I'll certainly continue to share because I want it to give people hope. You can never be so far gone that you can't come back. So... Let's just dance in some of these happy curtains and thankfully we've got a terrific church family that we're very active with now. We host a awesome group, art focused, but uh, pretty, pretty informal, which is one of my favorite parts about it. An art group for people connected to us or other members of the group and mostly uh, members of the same church we go to, at least regular attenders. So let's put in a few of these happy little curtainy things, kind of look like northern lights there. You know, in part of my physical recovery from all of that, I've gotten some incredible folks on my healthcare team see a hematologist at uh, Florida Cancer Specialist. He's fantastic. I was introduced to him from Dr. Ashley, who operates with her business partner, the Faithfully Guided Health Center here in Ocala. And you talk about just an incredible, incredible team of folks that really just help you in every way you can think of as far as taking care of yourself, whether that's from a physical standpoint to using guided meditation and uh, hyperbaric oxygen chamber and uh, incredible sauna that has light therapy associated with it as well. I see a counselor on a regular basis through them. She is absolutely wonderful. You want to talk about a a wisdom and care and, and heart for people. I, I haven't met that many people like that, and this will probably sound strange to those of you who may not know either of these people, but my counselor at Faithfully Guided reminds me an awful lot of my mother, who can just connect with people, incredible listeners, And just, just wise. Just wise. Cool. So we're getting some curtains in there. Got a few of these little, well, maybe it's just light in the clouds. I don't know. Maybe we'll just add a little more of this. Have another layer of this blue. This corner looks like it needs a little something. Maybe it just kind of drips off our page. I don't know. I don't know. We're just kind of rolling with what happens here. Definitely going to do some mountains, because I want to make this a, a snowy, snowy, cold scene. It is a hot, hot day here in glorious central Florida. Had a little bit of a tropical wave go through yesterday. Brought us some great wind, or rain, wind. I had a little wind, but nothing crazy. Offer some thoughts or prayers for the crazy left coast. Imagine they're in full-blown storm hysteria. They're all watching the news and twisted up how they love to oversell the negative. 
in the media. Smart preparation would tell you just be prepared for those kind of storms all the time. And when they come, you just add a few of the fresh ingredients to that kit and you're ready for whatever happens. You're ready for at least a couple of weeks with no power or food from the grocery store. Or you're all set. Cool. So we've got a little bit in the, in the sky there. So let's put in some mountains. Like I said, we're just going to kind of play with the scene here. And let's do this. Let's do this. I do like that idea. Let's just kind of have a few mountains start out here. You won't be able to see this very well, I'm guessing, on the video, because this is just the dark color. I'm using mountain mix way off here in the distance. Oh, who knows? Maybe our valley kind of comes together like that. We'll have a little mountain. A little mountain starting there. Maybe it's just got a little peak sticking up against our little lighter touch of sky there. And we'll just do something with it as it comes down. I haven't been have all this decided and worked out beforehand. Like I said, that's part of the magic of this style of painting. You know, I don't know if it'll be valuable for you or not, but the, the, the background story on kind of how I call it a drinking career, as I do share this story with people who are trying to get free of alcohol as well. I'd, I'd certainly do anything to help somebody else break that vicious grip it can get on you, and once it's got you, it's almost like once the bird's caught in the cage, it's flying days are over. Well, that's about when you figure out you've got a problem with alcohol is when it's too hard to shake on your own. But my drinking career started really innocently. Those of you who know me and and know my family and parents. You know I had two of the greatest parents in the world. I did not have a bad situation at all growing up. We moved a lot. Looking back on it, that was kind of tough. But like I said, my mom is one of the best people on the planet. And I'm fortunate that she's my mother and dear friend. And dad was a patriot through and through. And Gave 35 years of service to the Air Force and a great example of a husband, a dad, a leader in church, great people. But I was working a little a little job as a, a young teenager, I was 14, and innocently enough, started uh, drinking with one of my buddies in the neighborhood. At first, it was just kind of fun to, to snag a little hooch out of his fridge or a few beers that were in our fridge or a very limited amount of alcohol that was ever in the house that uh, I, I grew up in as a kid. But um, I started smoking cigarettes back then. We'd go to the little local uh, uh, NASCAR racetrack back when it was Winston Cup and they sold cigarettes at the track. Well, if you walk up to that place smoking a cigarette when I was 14, 15 years old, they didn't even question you for ID. They just sold you whatever you wanted. And so access to alcohol was easy. Access to cigarettes was easy. And that's innocently enough how it began. And uh, over time, I drank more and more. We moved back to Florida. Um, that's a bit of a, a tough thing just to change schools again as a teenager. I'm not making an excuse. It was hard for me. I, uh, I certainly struggled with it and managed to find a, a little bit of a easy source for buying beer, buying liquor, and, uh, was getting pretty hammered almost every weekend. There were even a couple of times I drank before I was on the swim team when I was a senior in high school. I'm pretty darn good at it. And uh, picked up some booze on the way to... We, didn't have to, we swam in the morning, so we were in the pool early, early in the morning. Let's make that a little darker over there. So then we didn't really have a first period at school. We... Uh, just go and sit in the cafeteria. Well, before football game 
Fridays, we'd have a pep rally, of course. And, um, well, I chose to go by the little store I could get booze at and uh, did that. I drank a, not a pint of Cisco, I believe it was called. Kind of like a strong version of uh, Boone's Farm. <laughs> What was that stuff called? Strawberry, Strawberry Hill, Boone's Farm, something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, I got this stuff called Cisco, and I remember reading the label, and it said, Caution, overconsumption may cause blindness. <laughs> You'd think a, a warning like that might might slow you down, but uh, it did not, did not slow me down a smidge, unfortunately. Well, and that sort of nonsense continued all the way through my academic career, certainly at FSU, I wore like a badge of honor that number one party school in the nation moniker that FSU had back then, and boy, how I'm so fortunate to still be alive, and I've come out of Florida State with a relationship with the lovely Mrs. Wilcox, who through all our ups and downs Perhaps at the time she shouldn't have stayed, she did, and thankfully we have weathered storms and have celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary together. So it was quite an adventure, I guess it's fair to say. So, all right, well, there's a distant uh, set of mountains. Oh, let's sneak in a, a little closer set, maybe a little bigger set as they're coming up here. We'll get a little bolder older kind of look to these mountains. I don't want to chop off all that misty area I put in there. So I'm going to see if I can keep this installment of progress, not perfection, to about 30 minutes for you. I don't want to bore you to tears, but you know, one of the pastors at our church we were soccer parents together, and so we have been friends, and our families have known each other, our kids have all known each other, the boys played soccer together on the same team, our oldest ones. Sean preached a message, I believe it was last Sunday, if not it was the week before, and had, some, had an incredible stat, which came out of a recent article published by the U.S. Surgeon General about how starved for personal relationships our country is. Like, it's really at, at, at pandemic proportions. I think that's why we see people so angry driving down the roads and just the craziness that seems to be going on. I don't watch the news, so I, I don't put that stuff in my head, but, you know, I stay aware of things that are going on. And that's why I want to do this. I mean, if you have walked a road with alcohol like I have, if you reach out to me, I'm not an expert, but I'm a good listener, and I will help you find resources that can help you. Uh, I couldn't have done. I couldn't have gotten free of alcohol on my own if I hadn't met people here locally, like Ben Marciano, who will be our next mayor. He and I just happened to sit next to each other a few years ago. I guess we're sneaking up on about two and a half years ago at a uh, Ocala Chamber and Economic Partnership breakfast. Huge breakfast, probably 600 and some people in the room. Well, there were only four at the table we were sitting at. One was Ben. One was his uh, uh, sales director for the gym he owns. The other two were Lori and I, and Lori and I were not in a good place um, in our relationship. We had, anyway, that, that's another part of the story I'll share, but just talking with Ben went from, I knew who he was because I've been in a few events. I'd heard him speak before. I didn't know anything about his story, and by the time we left that breakfast, he had shared with me his own personal story of recovery and just, just an amazing guy. And I'm not one of those guys that just meets other dudes and starts pouring out my heart and gets all weepy and uh, a, a big hug 
at the end of that. But that is exactly what happened at the end of our conversation. And I just think that was divine intervention. I absolutely do, without a doubt, because he just spoke into my life, and I've had a, a few other people I'll share with you over different uh, conversations. I'll do it on these videos, and just if it if it can help somebody, that's that's the objective I'm looking for. But I found a great group to get plugged into through that conversation with Ben, and then also from Dr. Ashley at Faithfully Guided. I have a 12 step group I'm an active member of and just trying to stay sober one day at a time and and help somebody else do the same because that's that's all we can do. So if you're in a position to help, do it whatever it is. If you're in a position that you find yourself needing help, that is not admitting weakness. The actual actual supreme show of strength is knowing when you need help. We're not supposed to be good at everything. I was given certain gifts and talents. You've been given certain gifts and talents. Our job is to find them, identify them, work on them, get better at them, use them, help somebody else with them. I think that's what the job is. And that's what I'm that's what my goal is with this kind of stuff. I I don't want to turn anybody off to something because you think I'm preaching at you. I'm the last guy in the world that's going to take that kind of approach or, I don't know, I, again, I, I hope you've known me before, you've watched my other videos, you know something of my story like that, because that, that's just not who I am. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you, oh, you should do it my way because it's, I'm right and so smart and have all this figured out because my gosh, is that not true? That is just, I have learned more by trial and error and error and error and error and just keep getting back up. Just keep getting back up. The shameful part is, is I'm the one who's knocked me down most times. So, you know, that's that's okay. That, you, as long as you're on this side of the grass, you get another chance and another chance and another second chance and another second chance and another second chance. And another, <laughs> thankfully those chances seem to uh, to keep going. But if you get a little better and learn something and help somebody else along the way, well, I think I think that's the job. I think that's the job. So I do love paint and winter. So if you need help with that connection, you need you don't know what to do. Man, I've been there. I have been there. I have been there. Don't stay there alone. You do not have to stay there alone. Do not at all. Just be willing to raise your hand and ask for help. There are so many good groups available, so many quality individual people we have in our local community, our country as a whole. I still believe eight and a half to nine people out of ten are super give you the shirt off the back kind of people. If they found your wallet in the street, they would track you down to give it to you, and they wouldn't even have counted how much money is in it. It's that one out of ten that gives the rest of us the bad rap. That would steal it, would do the bad. Quit listening to all that negative noise and bad news nonsense. Turn it off. It isn't doing you any good. You know, part of my story, not only getting sober, is the adventure of my weight. Good gosh. That reads one of, like one of those cheesy, weird romance novels, almost. The, <laughs> the crazy path. You know, when I got over the, the last, the first four years of being free of alcohol, first, well, actually three, I lost 110 pounds. I heard uh, all kinds of different positive comments. Some people didn't know how to react. They recognized my voice, but they didn't recognize me in person. Which I got to tell you, was was a little strange, but pretty cool. Because when I was checked into the hospital, I weighed 278, almost 79 pounds. And I was fat, and I knew it, and I was miserable, and I was uncomfortable, and I would, would get winded, really 
bending over to tie my shoes. I mean, that's that's pretty pathetic, but but again, it's true. And so through that, just cutting alcohol and uh, soda out of my life, I lost, like I said, 110 pounds. My spleen being so huge was really quite a blessing because I couldn't eat that much. I would literally feel Thanksgiving full just, just by eating. I couldn't even eat a whole sandwich, I mean, or a, a whole hamburger. And so I just, just had to eat less. So what almost all those healthy diet type suggestions, whatever brand you, you subscribe to, most of them will tell you, eat small meals multiple times a day and healthier. Well, I could only eat so much, so I really wanted to eat things that tasted good. And so I would just have a few small bites of that, and then I'd have it later. So it worked like a charm for me. And promptly, I was doing a little bit of exercise, a few sets of push-ups a day, a few sets with my little, oh, bungee cord kind of thing that has, the, what do you call that, a resistance band. Nothing, no crazy workout regimen, though, because I don't really like working out, never have. And uh, just uh, the weight just fell off. It really did. It was kind of crazy. And uh, like most things in my life, when it's been working really well, I quit doing it. Well, that's exactly what I did with eating right and... Um, any of that exercise, so gosh, I guess uh, I've tracked back in my calendar and looked at, uh, I guess it was around January of last year, so a year and a half ago, I was eating too much. I just, just quit doing what was working. I wasn't eating healthy anymore. I... Uh, I, was, I made myself miserably full. The medicine um, my hematologist has me on has worked in sleep, shrinking my spleen so my stomach had more room to have more food in it. So my darn doctor got my meds right, <laughs> and then I got fat. So I went from 278, almost 279, all the way down to 168. So it was 110 pounds, just over. And then, as of about two weeks ago, I had swung back to 233 pounds. So, lost 110, 32, gained a little over, what is that, right at 65. And thankfully, making of this video this morning, it's August 21st, a Monday, um, I'm on the way down again. I'm at 227. And so, this time, I'm just eating less, spacing, just, just moderation and, and making wiser choices on on some food so there you go there's my grand wisdom on getting healthy so or healthy eating and exercise so gracious sakes what an adventure it's been but uh i've got clothes in my closet that go from medium that i really like wearing to where i am in the large and mostly extra large category right now and, uh, you know, I, I did a good bit of self, self mental abuse over the last several months just because I was so disappointed with that being the truth. And, um, you know, you can change any day. One of the uh, guided meditations I've been doing at uh, Faithfully Guided, it's uh, all about diet choice and. Any of us can choose any day. Just, just start today. Just, just start today and uh, either do a little exercise or pick a, a healthier lifestyle as far as consumption goes. Any of us can pick that on any day. We don't need something special. It doesn't have to be a special Monday. It doesn't have to be a special time of year. Just start. You can really start today. And man, I've repeated that uh, meditation several times, and um, man, I just really appreciate that, and and it's starting to sink in, and I'm just trying to make some better choices. Want to be a better example for the kids, so 
Well, there's my 30 minute timer. That's my old clock on the wall telling me we're at 30 minutes. So we're, we're pretty close. I'm gonna run a little over 30 minutes. If you gotta run, that's cool. Maybe come back and check out the finished painting. Tell me what you think, but that's where I wanted to share, share with you. I wanted to just kind of let you see behind the curtain a little bit because I don't have all the answers, but I am making progress and I am freeing myself from the desire or expectation of perfection. I was watching one of Bob's videos the other day, just, just within the last two, three days, and even his comment was, he has never done a painting, he had never done a painting that he was 100% satisfied with. Well, that should be very freeing. Old Dan probably would have been frustrated or kind of intimidated by Bob Ross saying something like that, but I get it. I completely get it. There's always something to improve and be okay with that you've put the expectation on yourself that you've got to be perfect, I don't think that's, I don't think that's in the instructions we've been given to live up to. I just, I really don't. So I would hope you'll free yourself of that and just extend yourself a little grace. You know, we'll often give other folks much more grace and patience than we'll even give ourselves. Well, be careful with that. Be careful. When you're in a good place and in a position of strength, boy, does that put you in a great spot to be helpful for others. And to you take care of you, get help for what you need help with. Don't expect that you can or should do it all yourself. That's not the job. I really don't think it is. I really don't. So we've just about got this finished up. Where I'll be comfortable leaving it. Boy, I just love doing these uh, wintry northern lights. Lori and I keep talking about going to see the northern lights, and we're just going to need to do that one day soon. Make that bucket list, do those things on it, because one day we'll be out of days. And then we'll wish we would have. And then it's going to be too late. Wouldn't that be sad? What are we missing here? What are we missing? How about we just grab, let's try that with a little filbert brush. See if we can just pull up a few, a few little things. Maybe make them look like tree trunks and such. Just a few. Just a few here and there. Just break up that straight line of the snow a little bit until we get something in front of it. And just breaking it up. A little bit of a little bit of reflected light dancing through there, here and there, and there, and here. That'll do. All right, how about a little, uh, where are we? where's my white fan brush? I make them both blue. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing I'm not trying to chew gum, too. I, I'd trip and fall down and get myself all twisted up in my microphone cord here. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> oh, I think it would be. <laughs> I do think it's okay to laugh at our own jokes, too. You can. I couldn't laugh at myself. It would just be everybody else laughing at me, and then that might get my, my little feelings hurt. So I often laugh at myself because, shoo -wee. Uh I'm trying to pull that straight down, believe it or not. I got enough giggle and shake in my hand. <laughs> kind of get a little crazy there. Do I have a clean enough fan brush just to soften some of that reflection a little bit? Oh, yeah, there we go. That's the more the reflection. See, and if you go gentle enough on these sort of things, you can add a layer on your reflections and then just go back and just, just diffuse them. Just give a little pull to the side. Don't go crazy. Horizontal as you can get it, because if you don't, you'll make your water look like it's running off the page. That's what you're going for. No problem. But just be aware of that. I don't know. Is that mist? Is it a glacier coming down towards the water? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, maybe it's, uh, is it a little waterfall that just kind of goes along and shoo, then we get a little waterfall in here? I don't know, maybe, why not? Water can do whatever it wants, pretty much wherever it wants. That'd be kind of cool though, wouldn't it? So we'll just soften that in. I don't want that to take over our whole painting. So we'll just kind of give it the idea. Maybe we'll have a little, a little foamy, 
just kind of, but it just falls in. And it's a little misty back there. Let's put in a few big trees and we're going to call this one done. I don't like to keep fiddling so long that I just kind of lose whatever's happening. So let's drop in some big trees. Love painting big trees. Let's do, uh, I've got some mountain mix and some Prussian blue left on here. And we'll put some nice highlights on these. So maybe we'll just put, uh, let's put some trees up here in the foreground. We'll just put in a couple of big ones. Just touch. And then push with some of that fan brush. Let more of it bend down. You've heard Bob say that a thousand times. Listen. Listen to him. I've watched a lot of Bill Alexander videos lately, too. And boy, how entertaining is that cat. Wow, I just love it when he goes on his little kind of tirade. Not tirade, not a fair word. Uh, just enthusiastic explosions of conversation with himself. <laughs> That's enthusiastic explosions of conversation. That'd be, that'd be an okay way to live, wouldn't it? There we go. We're just going to sneak in a few trees. Little ground cover here in the front just to give us a little something. Push some of that back. Maybe we'll put some big ones on the side and, and call this baby done. How do you feel about that? I like it. The tribe has spoken and voted. Thankfully, they're all in my head, so that's the only ones I've got to listen to. And just tap in. A little, a little dark here. Kind of close us in this corner. Maybe we'll put some snow down here like it rolls towards those little falls we snuck in there. I don't know. Maybe a big old tree over here, too. Close in this side. That center line's just to follow, so uh, you don't even really need it. You don't even really see it. Probably can't see the dark on dark there until I start tapping in some of that tree. So if you're going to paint along with me, just practice. Just be willing to practice. Practice till you get the fan brush to bend the way you want it to. Don't slide it on these trees. You want to let the brush do the work. Just let those uh, hairs of the brush all bend down, and you'll get all those little wispy things that make it look like an evergreen tree. It's really quite magical. This brush is pretty stiff, too, so I'm not getting as many, but there you go. So I'm not quite satisfied with this because I'm too lazy to change which brush I'm using. I love hearing Bob say, leave space between your branches so you can see through that tree to that stuff in the back. That's really part of where that magic is. And maybe we've just got some ground cover here. And this kind of comes down this way. Like I said, we'll put some snow on some of this. Give it some highlight. Oh, maybe we'll just bring our water cruising out that way. That'd be fun. Do I still have a white uh, fan brush? Yep. All right, so again, I've gone well past my 30 minutes here, so I appreciate your patience and hanging with me if you've stayed this long. If you haven't, you wouldn't know anyway that I just said that, so that's kind of kind of funny by itself, isn't it? Uh, you got to be willing to laugh. Have a good time, man. There's a lot of positive things happen. Are there a lot of things on this planet that can kill us? Yeah, sure. I got to take Andrew to school this morning, so just driving back and forth. Nobody nobody told me I was number one today, so I'm, I'm trying not to drive like such a little old man, but I'm also not going to get sucked into the crazies. There was a guy behind us at the light right here leaving the neighborhood. Drove him around me like a crazy fool. Like I was absolutely holding him up from an emergency call. Um... But he didn't have any emergency lights on the truck he, he drove. <laughs> and what did we do? We rolled up right next to him at about 10 traffic lights down the road. Old Dan may have extended some hand gestures back and forth to express my displeasure, but new Dan just, just didn't even engage him. Happened to mention it gently, asking Andrew, hey, is that the same guy that we uh, were in the neighborhood with? And then I love hearing Andrew's comment of, gosh, it just doesn't make sense to drive as crazy as some people do in the morning. And I just, oh, it just makes my heart smile that he got it. Am I brainwashing him? Well, yeah, I'm his dad. That's my job, isn't it? But you may disagree, and that's not part. 
I'll stand my ground, John, because I do think it's my job as his dad. Just to help teach him what I think is the best way to go. Be good to other people. Start there. That's certainly one lesson I am trying to embrace. We're all in this together. And so we'll just put a few highlights on this tree. Just a few. Leave those dark areas. Leave those dark areas. Change the flavor a little bit. Just a little whispered difference in color. Oh, that's going to be a little too globby right there. That's okay. Oh, I like that, actually. Sometimes those happy accidents do happen. Actually, quite often, believe it or not. Just touch, 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 All right, let's put in some real big bushy things to finish that off, and we're going to call this baby done. So I'm just going to clean out a little one-inch brush, pick up some liquid white. Got a little titanium white left on the palette. I had a little blue go through it before, just because that's what we had on the little highlights there. But let's just just kiss in a few little frozen, cold burr, cold looking bushy things here. And just, just push them in. They're in that brush. Keep some of that dark. Don't make them all the same. Boy, I still fight that to this day. Have some of them go a little higher than the edge of our little water there. Just help set it back. Everything behind it just gives a little nudge to the back. Um, what do we want to do there? Let's tug those up just a smidge. We'll get a little... Little frozen kind of dealios, little grassy things, little curvies here and there, just to break up that straight line we popped in there. Now we'll put some big old cold looking grassy things under over the top of that just to just to kind of finish that off a bit. There we go. See how you can just change your hand position a little bit? Let them bend. Don't slide here. Don't slide. Just let them bend. Ooh, maybe a little scratched in waterline. I always like doing that on the cold scenes too. Where's our waterline need to be? Kind of right out here where we're meeting there. Ooh, boy, does that look cold. Cold, cold, cold. Sure does. Oh, we could keep going. We could sneak back in there and tug down. Oh, we could just keep going for days, but let's not. Let's uh let's step back. Let's see what our uh Painting looks like there in the viewfinder. Yeah, that's a fun experience. I do like these 12 by 24 inch canvases. I appreciate uh, you hanging with me. Again, if you need help, find it. That ain't no joke. If you seek, you will find. Knock and the door will open. So don't do this life alone. Don't try to solve problems that you're powerless over by yourself. Don't try to do that alone. If I can help you, text me, call me, email me, drop a comment in this video, shoot me a Facebook message. There's a thousand ways. If it's not me, then reach out to somebody else. Have an awesome day. I can't wait to see you next time. I love you. Bye.